Hi, Nick. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. How are you? Really good. Really good. Thanks so much for making the time uh, and uh, putting some time away in your, your busy day to have a chat. All right. Hopefully this is a bit of fun. It's a nice distraction from the normal day job. Yeah, it sure, it sure is. It sure is. Um, look, really keen to, uh, to hear how you're going. Uh, really keen to understand from you kind of where you're at uh, in, in dealing with the, some of the impacts of COVID-19, uh, particularly with your, your array of, of early talent programs, um, but also lean on some of your experience and explore some of the questions that are on your mind um, uh, that you've been addressing, but it may be still open questions on your mind as you think about the future as well. And um, yeah, just pick your brain a little bit if that's all right with you. Um, you can try and picking it. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't mind. I can't, can't guarantee I've got all the answers and there's probably still a lot of questions and I've still got myself, but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be done uh, chat there. For sure. For sure. I think a lot of, a lot of us, uh, well, all of us have, have plenty of questions, but let's start, let's start with you. Um, tell, uh, tell everyone a little bit about your background um, and how you came into the early talent space. Yeah. So um, dude, where to start? So I suppose I'm, so I head up, early careers junior talent across Europe in Fujitsu. Um, I started Fujitsu as a grad back in 2006, um, which in my head isn't that long ago, but when I do the maths, it, it really is. Um, and I joined into what was, I suppose, our customer service, um, internal improvement type team. Um, I think, I think, you know, I, I mean, at the time I was a grad, I was applying for positions left, right and centre um, and, you know, happened to get a job with Fujitsu, which was really, really great. Um, and, you know, with most grads at the time, I didn't really know what, what it is I wanted to do. Um, I think the hiring manager in the assessment centre, I think I must have done a great presentation or something. And I ended up in a, in a role which was about um you know training people inspiring people in new methodologies about how to improve service um and that and that was really good you know i had a I had a great time and and fujitsu had a really strong grad program and in my second year of the grad program the person leading the grad program left um and the head of talent was looking for a new grad program leader um and I approached her and said, I reckon I could do this job, which was pretty bold of me to, to do that, considering I was still on the grad program um, myself. I knew the HR director quite well. Um, and, you know, we, we, we had a really, really great conversation. Um, and she quite rightly, you know, said, I love your enthusiasm, um, but but no, <laughs> the job is not yours. Um, and, you know, I, I you know, it was, that, that was absolutely fair enough. Um, and then, you know, my, so, so, my, so my history is I, I stayed in the role I, um, I was in. I ended up leaving Fujitsu to join a, uh, to join a consultancy. Um, I came back into Fujitsu um, after three years outside, um, again, into the kind of business improvement program and then the the grad role came back up again and the head of talent who was still the head of talent um i said you can remember you know quite a few years ago i i tapped you up and said i could do this job and she went yeah i absolutely do i said well i'm back and i reckon i could do it again um you know spoke about you know how i could see how i saw things going the kind of experience i'd built up over that time um, and she rightly or wrongly, hopefully rightly, then, then give me the roles. That's excellent. And what, and what a great, uh, I hope you share that story actually in your onboarding programs with your yeah, apprentices and good. grads and because it's such a great, you know, a great little story about saying there's something I really want to do. I might not be ready to do it. Uh, it doesn't mean it can't happen in the future and I still want to go and do it. Um, that's yep, fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. so what do you, uh, what do you really love about the early talent space now? But just as interestingly, what, like, what frustrates you about it as well? Yeah, no, absolutely. So what, what I really like about this space, I think it's a, it's a bit of the organization where um, I suppose there's a tension 
and you can start to kind of flex and adapt and, and experiment. So I think you've got, you know, certainly, so in Fujitsu, we've got, you know, like nearly 20,000 people across Europe. You know, we're an organization that has been living and breathing for 80 plus years. We've got our way of doing things, at, uh, you know, we'd love to be cutting edge, you know, we'd love to be innovative. We're not quite there. Um, and, you know, an 80 year culture and a history brings with it um, just a, a way of doing things and a certain mentality and a certain culture. Um, and I think at this early career entry level role, it's a, it's a bit of the organization that you can, you can feel the tension with, you can kind of start to flex and experiment with new ways of doing things. And I think you've got a freer license to be a bit more creative in, in this space. Um, so, so I really love that kind of, you know, trying to harness that energy of, you know, kind of a, a um, new generation coming into the organization and kind of you know, tack tackling kind of our organization for good, you know, kind of spreading, spreading the good energy. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think the fact you've generally got, I, I think anyway, a freer license to, to experiment, I think is really, really cool. But, you know, by the flip side, that then can equally be quite frustrated, you know, when you are um, having to justify or, um, or, or when an experiment that, that you know would be something great doesn't always get because you haven't pitched the investment right or um, actually you're kind of up against a stakeholder who doesn't quite connect to that generation. Um, you know, kind of, so dealing with it, we're dealing with the different generations, I think is, can be sometimes as frustrating as it is exciting. Right. Yeah. And particularly with an organization, as you say, with, with a, you know, an 80 year heritage, that is, yeah. as you say, quite fixed in its way that it does something and must be hard for those stakeholders as well to know, but there's a Fujitsu way in so many other parts of the, of the business. Why, like, why do we need to change? You know, why, why is this, why is this part? So, special or why does it need why does it need that sort of creative tension as you say yeah, yeah, yeah. tell me about how, what you've learned from your work in lean um uh as a as a you know in in between your two sort of fujitsu periods and how yeah. has that helped or hindered um what, what you do in the early talent space yeah absolutely so so i think kind of you know, quite early Sean, i mean so so my role when I first joined Fujitsu as a grad was in, that was their, their version of Lean, which is called Sense and Respond. And it was about, so we had toolkits, we had frameworks, um, but I suppose more importantly, it was about engaging people in um, taking responsibility for themselves. And actually I can see that kind of real dynamic and kind of parallel with early careers right these guys have gone through so, so their whole life in the education system has been this is what you need to learn um this is how you will learn it here's the reading list here's, here's the um here's the exam um I, and the, the the transition i said kind of suppose from edu from the world of education to the world of work this kind of real transitional mindset shift of you know, I'm, I'm not going to be told what to do necessarily in terms of my own development. If I've got work tasks, I might be able to do, but my own development, I think, you know, early careers marks the step backwards of, you're going to have to take responsibility from this for yourself. We're not teachers, you know, we're here just to, you know, provide you the space, you know, it's up to you to kind of do it. So kind of thinking about actually, how do you inspire and engage people um, in, you know, in the lean context, that was to kind of make, it, make their own improvements in, in their own work, but actually in the early career space, it's then around kind of taking charge of your own, um, of your own development. And then I think, you know, what was you know, kind of quite cool kind of learning my kind of trade in as a lean consultant was all that stuff around program management from, you know, managing stakeholders project plans you know all of that kind of stuff i think is really transferable to managing a program like a development program you know, you've got stakeholders you've got different business units you've got um you know customers um so all of that stuff and that and that was my pitch to the head of talent that says actually 
do you want someone to run a program? I kind of think I can do it. And you know, I think I can be quite creative with it as well. Um, and then things like you know, measuring return on investment. Um, you know, um, we kind of set a standard objective to all of our grads and apprentices about um, you've got to, and different business areas measure it differently, but ultimately the ethos is about repaying your value um, and we just make it really simple There's, you know, we could make it really, really complicated, but we just try and make it simple, which is around actually pay back your salary back to the organization and value somehow. Um, and actually, that's a great way to just you know, measure return on investment of your program, you know, kind of if people are doing that, that's a great stat to put out to the rest of the organization about actually why your program works. So I think having that type of mindset i think earlier on in my career has helped hope hopefully at least in running the programs yeah and 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 must be um i'm sure it would have and it must be quite appreciated in in a culture like at fujitsu uh and you know you're managing scale as well i think uh you have around about 400 uh different young people across your um different programs uh, may, maybe maybe more multiple locations uk um, and europe wide so i can i can imagine that yeah, it comes a whole set of challenges that that kind of lean methodology and lean thinking really um, really helps. You mentioned speed to value, actually, and for business stakeholders, in some ways, that's what it's all about. Maybe not all about, but a lot about. Uh, mm, is, you know, yeah. is, is how quickly can you bring these young people in and have them returning more value than they cost to bring in yeah. and pay for the time that they're still learning, um, and maybe under the current circumstances like with, with with the coronavirus um as we bring in particularly as we look forward to to um, new cohorts starting this year we need to be asking ourselves or well, what can we do to smooth that transition it's already a difficult transition for, for many young people to make even made even more difficult now in this <laughs> in this ambiguity yeah, join yeah. an organization from your bedroom uh you know, that's 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 a constant yeah. industry-wide challenge um at the moment so let's let's talk a little bit about um your early career um talent we're finding um you know in our conversations over the last well really four months uh because we've been dealing with the impact of um COVID-19 since January in Asia um but but also more now in the last sort of five or six weeks in Australia and the UK and, and Europe and the like there's kind of five stages that 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 kind of employers are um, going through. And this is a model we adapted from a piece of um, McKinsey work, actually. The first stage is resolve, and that's largely about, you know, uh, the pandemic's announced and people have to work from home or a, a country goes into lockdown. Uh, how do we resolve just the immediate issues in the, in the immediate sort of one to three or four weeks? Um, and then number two is about return, uh, which is around how do, you, how do you return to some form of delivery of your service, in this case, um, in the early career space and return quickly. It's not going to look how it did, but how do you return and return quickly? The third being, um, how do you sort of reimagine the way forward from now? Um, and in the early talent space, we're seeing that's really about a three to six month plan from where we are now, uh, taking us through to summer, taking us through to onboarding programs, taking back a bit of control um, uh, in terms of what's, uh, what's happening, and then redesigning that and, and, re and resetting it. Um, considering your development program, so we keep keep it focused on development for yeah. this discussion. Where, where kind of where are you on that on that continuum um, at present? Yeah, so so I suppose it, I suppose you can probably help me think about where we are in each of the stages. But I suppose what we've in terms of the development program, we've um, we've converted a lot of our modules to virtual delivery. Um, you know, we kind of had the conversation about, do we just pause it and kind of, you know, this will all blow over in a month or two. <laughs> so like, do we, do we just, do we just pause it and kind of pick things back up? Um, we, you know, we decided earlier, Sean, actually, we wanted to keep a sense of normality, I suppose, as much as possible. Um, so we, so we've converted just quite a lot of things to virtual delivery. Um, I think generally, what, you know, when we kind of do face-to-face -face stuff, we've designed it in a way which is generally high impact, right? If you're going to get people together, actually, it's not, you know, it's not a one-way lecture. You know, it needs to be interactive. It needs to be really high impact. So, 
and a lot of our focus on how do we maintain that um, kind of interactivity and it's not just a one-way tell. Um, so we kind of did that with a with kind of a module that was immediately coming up about personal impact. And then we kind of I think we've cracked that and we're we're, we're running that now. It's kind of got some really good feedback. Um, we're then coming up to another module for our second years, which is kind of a career kind of workshop, which is around you know, real reflective piece around what is it I've done, what have I achieved, where am I going, how how will I get there once I've finished finished the program. Um, we do a really neat thing around speed networking where we'd normally get, you know, managers in the business and we do physical speed networking in a big room with our grads, apprentices and, and, and managers. And we think about how do we make that work in Zoom and, you know, and, you know, so far we've been impressed with kind of what you can actually do on a, on a, on a platform. So we're kind of challenging ourselves with that. I think we've got a bit of a plan there. We have a really, really big event in July, which is kind of our biggest of kind of um, event on the program. It's three days off site, um, which is really, really immersive. Um, and again, so you know, I think I came to the realization it was just last week that um, you know, this won't all be over by the summer. <laughs> um, I was probably a bit too optimistic. And so we're just now thinking about what do we do in place with that? Um, starting to kind of realize our September intake, we'll, we'll not be able to, to get them into the office to onboard them and give them their kit. So actually, all those people that, you know, were struggling with this with summer interns, and I was quite grateful we didn't do, do summer interns, and I thought, phew, I've managed to dodge that. Suddenly, actually, you know, actually, that's what I need to start thinking about in September, and I'm hoping there's there's going to be a loads of learning from um, those organizations who've gone through that in the summer. Um, so, yeah, I think we're in that stage of immediately converting some stuff, but actually thinking, actually, this is, this has got some wider, longer implications. Yeah, I think, I think you're right there, Nick. Um, it's, it sounds like you've been doing a really good job at resolving, um, I guess the, the inherent issue in the immediate yeah. kind of immediate kind of programs. And now you're at that point where you're thinking, actually, we need, we, we need a plan for the next three to five months here through yeah. summer, including, including onboarding. Um, so I, I think you're on the right track there. And what we're finding is, um, is making a difference is, is both the speed and discipline in which that decision is being made. Um, and, and the speed and discipline around the pivoting, uh, is really, really important because what's going to matter most I think we think um, is is to put in place a, a flexible strategy that gives you options. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, you you might be able to get a hundred people together in September, but what if you can't? I'd love to, exactly. <laughs> right? I don't think we can. But yeah. Right. So, so if you throw all your eggs in one basket and say it'll be fine, we're gonna we're gonna roll the dice and it'll be fine by September or August or whatever. What if it's not? Yeah. So it's it's. I think um, a lot of organisations now are moving into um, a, a flexible approach. Well, let's plan to virtualize it. Let's yeah. plan for a scenario where where our new grads start their first day at home, and then Plan B is bring them in, like bring them in live if if we can. We can always we can always make that flip with a couple of weeks' notice or a month's notice or, or whatever. But to flip back the other way, much more difficult. <laughs> yeah, if you have if you haven't thought about that, yeah, absolutely. You can't pull together a virtual onboarding in a week or two, absolutely. Um, and the, and the and the benefit of that as well is is planning a virtual onboarding. I think um, with three months' notice, um, you can start thinking about virtual events. You know, with yeah. agendas and speakers who come in at different times, and you're not kind of scrambling um, at the at the at the back end. Are you are you with that kind of realization? Are, are you thinking now that you will? pilot some things between now and then will you sort of ring fence a couple of um ideas give things a go test them um how do you think you'll how do you think you'll start playing this out now over the next few months yeah so, so i think you know i think we're taking really good comfort in the fact that you know what would have been some big face-to-face -face events about kind of personal impact and stuff we've made work all, all, over zoom and we're kind of reflecting about what makes things work virtually. So actually having some type of activity, at least every 10 minutes, you know, no more than 15 minutes, 
know, get them into group work. Um, if, if you kind of, if your platform allows that, put up a poll, put up a quiz, um, you know, actually reduce the one way information telling actually works quite well. So we're kind of thinking about just some general principles about, you know, how to design virtual delivery. Um, and I think it's really interesting when we talk about, you know, um, previously, you know, six weeks ago, when we talked about online delivery, it was e-learning, right? Which had real kind of, not negative connotations, but it was compliance training and it was one way delivery. Um, and actually, I mean, that was only six weeks ago. <laughs> and actually just how the world's changed in terms of what the art of the possible is, you know, kind of necessity is the mother of invention, absolutely. And um, so we're coming up with a set of principles. Um, and equally, what we're not doing is we're not taking a two day event and keeping someone on Zoom from nine o'clock to five o'clock for two days. You know, that would that'd just be, you know, un unbearable. So we're breaking it up into chunks of kind of no more than an hour and a half. Um, so, you know, I think when we, you know, when, when I've got some space to start thinking about what does onboarding look like, I think we'll have a set of principles to start to work with, which I think you will have tested kind of with some of the modules actually we've kind of converted already. Um, and, you know, I'm, and I don't know kind of what I'm kind of thinking is actually we'll reserve onboarding for just afternoon only right and actually or, or morning only right so then their afternoon as they're getting to grips with this organization in the comfort of their bedroom they can do that you know without having to look good on a camera and people judging their bedroom <laughs> and whether they're you know so um you know just giving them that space so i think it might be a longer time but actually um you know something like that i think will be something we're thinking about yeah i th i think i think you're on i think you're on the money i think i think also what's what's going to be important isn't it is is doing what, whatever you can to reduce the cognitive load yeah of a young person you know or making what what's what research shows is already difficult and can be stressful transition from two complete one world into a completely different one yeah uh in you know in in the scenario that you're uh, talking about so you know onboarding sessions in the morning with reading and videos or self-paced yeah, 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 stuff yeah, to do in the yeah, afternoon yeah. see you at nine o'clock tomorrow go yeah, and yeah. go for lunch um I, th I think it's a i think it's a fantastic um idea um do you think there will be uh well let's 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 get into the future in a minute that's where i always want to yeah. go like what, what's it going to look like um or what, and what and what uh, we get into the future discussion later as i say but what we want it to look like is such a a slate that is being cleaned isn't it um when we think about your the early talent themselves now um you've got apprentices you've got grads uh, you've got people who are have just come off maybe a grad program how are they going how, how are they dealing with with this like are we the ones um <laughs> not yeah. worried but like you know working out what to do and this and there and they're kind of they're cruising through it um are they how are they doing working from home um what, what's that experience been like for them what sort of response have you seen yeah so, so you know in in the main um i think everyone's just really pragmatic about it all you know i think everyone just understands the situation that that we're in um you know it was you know thrust upon everyone really quickly um you know kind of who would have imagined this world only seven weeks ago um so i think everyone's just really really pragmatic um i think um and actually where we have done things like actually we want to trial something so actually in our recruitment space we really quickly designed a virtual assessment center and we kind of said look we need to test this next week because we're running we're going to run it next week how do we do it and we had loads of people say you know like yeah i'm happy to test it i'm going to test it and then when we've converted our modules to kind of online delivery um again um We've kind of said look this is the first time we're doing this you know please let us experiment but give us your feedback because you know actually this is just an iterative process of us kind of understanding it um, and again you know people were people were generally really thankful that we hadn't just paused right we hadn't just kind of stopped training and said actually just fill, fill your time and you know do some self stuff um, so they were just really grateful to just 
to, to get a sense of normality as well. But I think more than anything, what they really valued, other than the content, was actually just a sense to connect with each other. Um, and and that kind of feedback from, you know, from you know, when we ran day one for the first time, you know, was we just want more group activity actually in kind of small breakout type rooms because we just want the chance to connect and, and talk with each other. So, you know, by day two, we'd built a lot more of that stuff in. So, you know, I think really pragmatically, they, they, they understand actually kind of this is a situation everyone's in. Um, they're really sensible about it. I think the takeaway I'm kind of taking is it's about providing them the opportunity to connect. Hmm. Um, you know, one of the things you know, we did and then kind of a video message out to all of the grads around how, how do we want to connect not in a work context but do you want to do some online quizzes or you know drawing classes or anything you know it doesn't have to be work you know we're all in a really odd situation and if you're living by yourself and you don't have a support network you might value that so so we did you know and we kind of got grads across Europe just playing games at the end of the day um, so I think that sense of connection is really important what would you that's a, it's a really um re really really interesting point you make and i think once you once you take away a sense of connection like we always want what we think we can't have right mm. so <laughs> um it, the, the void is created people people try and fill the void so that sense of people wanting connection now makes so much sense i think we're all experiencing yeah i think we're all experiencing that as you think about the short-term way forward three months six months uh, maybe through to the end of 2020 um what sort of blend do you think of of work related development and then that sort of non work so you sort of more social personal connection like playing games or or you know the examples you just said what sort of blend do you see that happening is it is it not, do you see it sort of panning out as 80% work oriented stuff and 20% non work do you think it'll need to be a lot more than that yeah oh, it's really interesting I, so, so i'm not too sure i think where we so, so I think, you know, we, we'd both probably agree, right? Any type of learning when it's fun, yeah. you know, is, 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 is great, actually. So, you know, that kind of session that we did around, actually, this doesn't have to be work. Let's just connect. And they kind of played games with, in my head, I was just rationalizing it as we just need to provide some connection with, 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 with people. Um, the, the 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 big event that I said that we did in July that we do in July it's you know it's an offsite kind of event where you know they're they're kind of in small groups and they're kind of solving problems and they get loads of feedback um, and actually something popped into my inbox literally last week which was a virtual escape room and there's a there's, there's a company who you know quite rightly they're thinking no one's coming to escape rooms you know what can we do to enter money and they've converted it into basically a pack that you kind of print off at home um, you send it to kind of your team um, and you know you, you you get a platform and I assume you kind of solve problems and stuff on on online um, so actually we I've, I've, I've bought it and we're going to trial it because actually that that would be a great thing to kind of you know do kind of and actually there'll be some real learning from that around around how have you come together as a team? And if you've nominated a leader, um, how is that, that leader doing? So actually there's stuff you can replicate, stuff in a game way, which might not feel like learning as such, but equally people can still have some fun because I think that, that was always the big bit. If, if we're going to get lots of people together, you know, when, when we could meet virtually, I wanted it to, to feel fun as well that, you know, you know, people enjoyed the experience. Yeah, yeah. I, there's there is so much there is so much now you can do virtually, yeah. um, and I think um, w w one one of the great things about this period is it will really open the world's eyes to what can be achieved virtually. Yeah. Um, we have a we have a as many do I guess a virtual reality uh, exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kisha was telling me about a lot of this stuff. You've got lots of stuff you can do virtually. Really, really, really cool. Um, and we were just um, we got together as a team about a week ago actually, um, and and uh, to to test out the virtual version of the virtual reality exercise. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so no, 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 uh, no goggles, but working in teams and breakout rooms and problem solving and going, going through the whole, uh, whole experience and just fantastic. I mean, this is with our team. Like we're used to this, right? Like, yeah. 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 We're, we're used to learning and designing and, and making stuff interactive and engaging and sticky and all that and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I thought at first, I thought, ah, oh, virtual, virtual reality. Yeah. Okay. That, well, we should try it. Like let's, let's test it out. Um, and, uh, and, and was, was amazed. I, I think there's so much, um, there's so much potential uh, and innovation that that's coming from this period uh, through, you know, in our personal lives from kids, yoga classes. I mean, who would have thought um, <laughs> through to, you know, the sort of, the sort of stuff that we're, that we're talking about um, here. It's um, yeah, it, it's exciting. It, it's yeah, yeah. Really, really, really exciting. It um, is, you know, could, so go on. No, no, go on. What were you going to say? No, so I, I was just reflecting back on your question. I don't know if I fully answered it around, you know, what, what kind of percentage will be fun? What, what, what will be work? And, you know, one of the things I've been thinking about as well is I think, um, especially in the early career space, is actually these guys form friendships, right? Kind of, you know, you know you're joining an organization for the, for the first time with a load of other people in the same boat. And, you know, what we kind of find is actually lifelong friendships are made. I know in, in offices, you know, people have socials and they go out to cinemas and they have regular, you know, clubs and stuff. And actually, if we're facing a world where actually people will be doing, joining an organization in their bedroom, actually, how do we still get a sense of just social kind of connectedness to people in our organizations? Because that's still important to everyone, right? You know, kind of, we spend a lot of time in an organization and we want to, we want to build relationships and like the people that we work with. So, you know, where people then can't do that for, you know, drinks outside of the office or whatever, you know, how do we make that happen? Yeah, it's, uh, and, and one, and one of the, the key benefits of joining a grad program or an, an apprenticeship or, or whatever the scheme might be, both for the, both for the organization, but the individual as well, mm. you, you meet, you meet people in a grad program, you'll be in meetings with 15 years from now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and for the organization as well, you know, that, that social cohesion, Build relationships that carry through to the work across the enterprise, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so remembering to build that in in whatever we do virtually, in onboarding programs and the like, absolutely critical. And what well, that's yeah. from a commercial sense, from a psychological sense, we also know that connectedness and relatedness mm. is one of the three psychological needs we have in terms of being our best. Yeah, um, and so that any 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 of the stuff you're talking about is going to be um, really really important. And um, let, let's 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 sort of lean into the future into the future then as we as we come around on the home straight here um as you think about kind of after we get through september and we start sort of in getting into maybe reimagining or redesigning what the future could look like um there's probably going to be some things we want to reinvent um coming out of this period and this this way of living and working um, there's probably going to be some things we want to reinstate as in you know, go back to and there's probably going to be some things we want to review down the track. What, what are some of the things you think you might want to reinstate and then, but also reinvent, do you think? Yeah. So I think, um, so I think, you know, what's, what's kind of happened is, you know, we've, everything's been converted virtually and, you know, where we, you know, used to get people together because we saw value in that. And actually we've, I suppose we've kind of, proven to the organization we don't have to do that <laughs> um and if i'm the ceo the cfo or the you know the <laughs> the budget holder and next year i go i know we didn't do it last year but we need to do it again this year that you know we all need to be prepared with the question of well why actually what and i, I, I don't have the answer yet other than it just feels like the right thing to do <laughs> it, went, it went it went really well this year it didn't yeah. go too well yeah, exactly. then we need our budget for next year. Yeah, and... <laughs> exactly. um, so I think that'll be that that'll be really interesting. But you know, I think I'm pretty sure we can build an argument around all the things about connectedness and psychological safety and, and all of that stuff. Um, I think there's, but but equally, I think there is a, a case for actually really challenge yourself in terms of you know what can you do virtually. You know, I think 
where we had done virtual delivery of, of, of content, it, it, it was a one-way delivery. And, um, and then, it, you know, if it, if it wasn't e-learning and it was just content delivery, if it was a, a, a webinar, it was still one way. Um, and, you know, you then kind of say, actually, we tried to ask a question to a group of 100 people, you know, over a WebEx and no one answered. So, you know, it, it kind of doesn't work. Um, actually, we've kind of proven that actually, if you do it right, if you set it up right, um, and you've got the, you know, you've got the principles around, you know, early engagement of activities, you know, you've got small group work, actually, then, then you, then, you know, that that budget holder does have a valid argument that says well actually what what can you um you know, I, I mean i i think it would be wrong probably to kind of shift everything to virtual you know people want a connection they want to feel invested in that's a kind of one of the key learnings i found with general talent management not just early career talent management all talent management people want to feel invested in by the organization so um you know flying or traveling to the head office to feel and physically being able to see the the amount of people that you know you're in the same boat with i think really has a value on it um, I, don't, I don't know how we articulate that yet <laughs> but 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 the cfo will will, will no doubt want to know that soon um yeah so, so i think I, I think that there will be yeah, uh, there's something not not certainly nothing in my program. I can say we we will reinvent that. We'll we'll reinstate that. But I think we will be really challenging ourselves to say, can we do more mm -hmm. virtually and actually not just more of the current program, but more content even actually kind of actually you know you've gotten rid of all your travel expenses. So actually, there's an argument that says you can just put more into your program. Um, and actually provide a really really great experience but equally i think you need to be mindful of actually what you do want to reinstate as well but you can have the argument that says how do you kind of back that up i think yeah what's it what's it for what's the value mm. that it <clears throat> what's the value that it brings you make a really interesting point about potentially now being able to put more content into a program you know mm. it's a really well run you know, one hour virtual masterclass once a week mm. might be palatable, right? Right. I mean, you can never get a, a day in a workshop a week or a, 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 sorry, a workshop day in a week, every week, or, but you might actually be able to like, sprinkle more content throughout a year long program in a far more easy to access barrier free uh, kind of way um, yeah. and, and cost effective, like, you yeah, know, yeah, in, yeah. In, incredibly so. And then potentially, even just taking the travel travel that you've saved in that and and reimagine what you could do with that money um but also think about maybe the if, if we're bringing people together to really get disciplined and i mm. talked earlier about speed and discipline you get really disciplined about only doing things you can only do when you've got physical people in a room together yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. everything else almost could be virtual um yeah. or, or at least tested and piloted and 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 re rethought of in a, in a virtual sense, but only do things you can, you know, in, in a room that you actually need physical human beings. Yeah, in that you know, real high impact way, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing, you know, for, for a young grad or a young apprentice, there's, you know, one of, the, one of the best things about live events are the, the by the way conversations with a super senior managing director. Mm. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. in the design of the program. They walked out the door together at the same time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and got caught in the corridor for five minutes and this incredible chat that the young person remembers for 40 years. Yeah. Um, like you can't, there's, there's stuff like that that's so valuable in a development program that, that you can't necessarily get virtually. And so I, I, I agree. I think, I think there will be stuff that, that there will be a case for live stuff, <laughs> in-person yeah. stuff. Uh, but, and I think that'll be one of the things that get reinstated, but I don't necessarily think it'll be to what you're saying in, in exactly the same um, in exactly the same form. Do you have a do you have a sense, Nick, uh, of how far the pendulum will swing? You and I were talking um, before we um, started recording today about the pendulum swing. It swung to vert completely to virtual now. You know, it, it'll swing back away. Do you do you have a sense for how far or or what some of that will look like? Yeah. So you know, I, so I think what's really interesting is you know you, you know, read a lot of articles about you know 
the, the COVID situation has just been a catalyst for what was potentially the inevitable and, you know, being, you know, humans and, you know, we were just resisting, right? Um, but we've somehow all proven in a really short amount of time that technology does have a place and it still can be valuable. So, 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 so I, and, and I don't think, and I hope it doesn't, um, you know, travel swing all the way back. Um, and I think a lot of it was, you know, if I think of my own experience, you know, I, I'll put my hand up. I, I have gotten on a train, you know, to, uh, you know, down to London from Manchester, which has been, you know, best part of 200 pounds for a half hour meeting because it was with someone senior and, you know, and there was just the cultural norm was that you just wouldn't challenge that, you know, if, Someone had said, you know, you need to be here. And if you, and if you dial in, then well, actually, you know, kind of, you know, black mark against your name. Um, actually, you know, I think, I think we're challenging that. And I think that's, that's really, really great. You know, our, our CEO, you know, b before the lockdown. So, so at Fujitsu, we were, um, we were head of the head. We, we banned international travel. Um, head of health and safety had done that. And, and I must admit, we all probably thought, going a bit too far um but actually he was he was right and our and our ceo um you know didn't travel to japan which is where you know our parent organization was where um and it, it, it meant he had to get up kind of in the middle of the night to do a to do a review with with japan um but actually that was the right thing to do and you know our kind of japanese ex, you know said actually and that was absolutely the 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 right thing to do so i think um so it's opened up a, a wealth of opportunities which um we all knew were possible but i think our kind of cultural norms of actually, our heritage and experiences were technology is not the right format for this it's just really quickly swung on its head um so i think so so, so i don't think we'll go back to normal um I think it'll be an interesting time for the travel industry about how do they, you know, how do they, you know, make money against the business travelers and stuff who are much more comfortable with virtual now. Um, but so, but equally, I, I can't see us ever going truly virtual because there still is a human element and a, and a, and a connectedness with, with, with people still. You know, we're, we're, we're not robots yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yet, yet. Well, maybe, maybe this was, uh, this maybe this was um, a part of the real Terminator story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I don't, uh, I don't think so. Nick, we're going to wrap it up here, but we're going to wrap it up with ten, uh, your uh, your top ten uh, about Nick uh, okay. and your your career. Uh, so if we might, uh, we might fire with those ten and then let you go. Thank you so much for, yeah, okay. um, thank you so much for your time this afternoon and um look forward to virtually seeing you again sometime soon yeah uh, yeah but in but in the meantime here we go top 10 questions for nick white uh favorite food thai food favorite drink anything with cherry and cherry cocoa dr pepper cherry wow yeah love cherry. uh favorite exercise it's become my favorite exercise in lockdown i hated it previously but it's a burpee um because you know get your heart rate up something rotten um hated it beforehand but um but yeah can, can, can see it working now <laughs> yeah burpees in lockdown i like it uh most influential book you've read um oh so this is, a, this is it's, it's a fictional book actually um it's a book by jody pico um and it's called small great things um it's, a, it's about racism and it really i said it's a fictional book but it you know I, i'd heard the term unconscious bias before but actually i and, and I cognitively knew what it meant, but actually this kind of painted a real picture about it, about what it actually means, about how you take in situations. Um, so Brilliant. yeah, really, really great book. My favorite author, Jodie Pico. I will look it up. Uh, your best career moment? Um, best career moment. I think that was um, quite early as Sean taking on the grad program. I won the Personnel Today Award for best graduate program. So, so hey, that's probably well it. Well done. Well done. If you could change one thing in the world, what would it be? Um, excluding the obvious about COVID, I should imagine, um, and a president called Trump. Um, I think I, I took a New Year's resolution this year to be 
more grateful for the things that I have. So um, I think um, asking or, or giving the ability for everyone to be more grateful for everything that they have. If you could have dinner with one person, who would it be, dead or alive? Um, um, uh, Victoria Wood. I think she's so funny. Ah, brilliant. I love her, yeah, yeah. Uh, two more. What was the last gift you gave someone? Um, some, a, a batch of cookies. At the weekend, I did a virtual bake along with my friend's kids, teaching them how to make cookies. I had about 30 cookies that I wasn't going to cook myself, um, so I gave them to some neighbours. Ah, brilliant. Uh, and last one, what are you most proud of? Um, ooh, do, 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 do. So, um, I, so I live in, a, I live in a, an apartment block. Um, a few years ago, we found out we had the same cladding as Grenfell, so it's highly flammable. Um, we were going to be hit with the cost of replacing that. That was going to be £7 million. Um, and in, in the terms of our lease and our contract, we were just going to have to pay that as the best part of £25,000 each. Um, and it was a real David and Goliath, you know, kind of fight against a big corporate. Um, and, and we won. So um, so I had no idea what, what we were doing, how to tackle that legally or anything like that. But, um, but yeah, but we're not paying that. So that's really I'm so, proud of that. I'm so glad you, you brought that uh, up. I watched that <laughs> unfold on social media. I remember talking yeah, to you about at different yeah, industry yeah. events over a long time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your absolute uh, tenacious nature in which you fought yeah. that was, um, was fantastic. Actually, I was, really, I was so impressed. Well done. Um, Nick, yeah. thanks, thanks so much for your time. No worries. Thanks, Josh. Thanks.
Mm -hmm. this computer. All right, so that's recording. Um, I might even count us in, Nick. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> as uh, long as you go five, four, three. Uh, <laughs> Keep the silent bit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, we'll, do, we'll do that just for fun. Ready? Yeah, yeah. Five. <laughs> oh, hang on. No, I've got the numbers wrong already. Five, <laughs> I did it. I did it. Four, three.